And if you're listening at home, join us. Sing along. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved Aloha and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to each and every one of you. Now, it has been a crazy year by all measures. Uh, it has gone by quickly and it seems like we're at a place in time where nothing is safe from being politicized or being attacked, not even Christmas. Now, you, you hear about this sometimes being talked about in the mainstream media and you know people talk about Christmas being canceled and others in the mainstream media saying, well, no, 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 that's just some far right wing conspiracy. But let's just look at the facts. As people celebrate Hanukkah, it is customary to, to greet them with Hanukkah Samiak. At the end of Ramadan, we wish our Muslim brothers and sisters Eid Mubarak. And as Hindus celebrate Diwali around the world, we wish people a happy Diwali. But for some reason, when it comes to Christmas, the Cancer Culture Brigade tells us, hey, you're not allowed to say Christmas. You're not allowed to say Merry Christmas. Instead, they tell us you have to say Happy Holidays because otherwise you might offend someone. Now, trying to erase Jesus Christ from Christmas is an example of the depth of spiritual erosion in this country that we're seeing and the length and efforts that people are going through to try to erase God and especially Christianity from every corner and facet of our public lives. Now, so this time of year that's meant to be and even marketed as a joyful time of year, the reality is that it is unfortunately filled with increasing rates of depression and sadness and loneliness and emptiness and tragically suicide. Too much of our society is missing the true meaning of Christmas. Instead, promoting superficial materialism, we are all bombarded with ads, whether they're popping up on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. We have commercials on television, billboards, all telling us, hey, happiness can be purchased for the low, low price of $9.99 or $25, whatever it might be, trying to get us to believe truly that we are going to find happiness in these things rather than focusing on and celebrating the real reason of Christmas, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ and his message of love for God and love for one another. So because of all of this focus on just about everything but Jesus Christ's message in Christmas, it's easy to forget what it's really all about. Truly giving, being of service to others, making a positive impact with our lives, and that in doing so, this is what brings us true happiness. This is what brings us greater happiness than being served by someone else. This is what gives us true fulfillment, giving more than getting. I'm so grateful to have realized very early on in my life that that was where happiness is found, that I was happiest when I was doing my best to be of service to God and to others. Happiness is not found in a gift wrap box or a fat bank account or a fancy car. That's the truth. Now, this is the paradox. As long as we are searching for happiness and doing everything that we can selfishly for ourselves to be happy, we're not ever going to experience true happiness and true fulfillment. But once we set aside our own selfish interests and our own pursuit, selfish pursuit of happiness, once we stop focusing on how we can find that happiness for ourselves and instead focus on how we can be of service to others, work for the well-being and the happiness of others, that's when we actually experience true happiness. Now, Reverend Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. No matter who we are, what we do in our lives, what skills or talents we may have, no matter any of these superficial things, every single one of us can find our own way to be of service to others. Today, in honor of the celebration of Christmas and the holidays, I'm excited to introduce you to two of my favorite people in the world. This has given me a great excuse to be able to hang out with them, mom and dad. Christmas, take two, take one. Mark. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> so Perfect. career options here. 
It actually matters. It's not just for show. No, I know. I, yeah. I've been on video before. We oh, have to sorry. do that. Oh, Gosh. <laughs> so you're really an old hand. And <laughs> yeah, you know, I have to... Slate The editor needs to know which take it is, That's right? right. And sync the audio and, you know. Yeah, that's thing. right. I've been learning something in my old age. <laughs> <laughs> well... I am excited and proud to welcome you to our home studio. Thank you. Mm. I think, um, I'm trying to think, I think the last time that you guys were here, we still had a living room. Yes, things have changed quite yeah. radically here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like stepping over, I always joke, it's like it's only a half joke. Do you know what parkour is? No. Parkour is this, it's a very physical athletic activity where people like go and navigate obstacles, you know, just like running on walls and flipping off of bridges onto the ground and getting around different things. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of one of our friends is not very good at it, but he just runs around life pretending he is and just just like will kick up against a wall and yell parkour. <laughs> so it's a bit of a joke, but that's what I feel like walking through here, that you have to do parkour to navigate the obstacles of what used to be our living room. I know. <laughs> you gotta say it though. <laughs> <laughs> Parkour comes from the show The Office. Oh! <laughs> Parkour! Parkour! <laughs> I'm sure you're avid watchers of The Office, I've right? Never heard of it. Sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> it is a it is a funny show. <laughs> I'm trying to think of where we were. Last Christmas, I think because of COVID, you know, we didn't really get to do much of anything together as a family. And we've gone Christmas caroling and, and other things before, but I feel like for the last few Christmases, it's been pretty quiet. Yeah. Um, so I'm so stoked that you guys could come over today and we could share a few of our favorite songs yeah, with yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, people who are listening on the podcast, who are maybe watching at home. And I think, well, one of the songs we're going to do... Should we start with Amazing Grace? Sure. All right. Sure. It's Amazing okay. Grace. Yeah. That's... One of the most memorable times I remember singing this song was um, in Charleston, in South Carolina, uh, at a Baptist church that was a funeral service uh, for the families who had lost loved ones in the mass shooting at the mm -hmm. church. So the service was not actually at the church because there were so many people there. Uh, but um, it was so incredible because we heard from, uh, for example, one of the mothers whose child was killed in that mass shooting. And uh, in her remarks, she spoke about forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness to this guy who had taken her son's life along with others. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's it's an unimaginable thing to think of going through um, and understanding and knowing, even though I haven't been there in that position and I can't imagine how difficult it must have been for her as a, a mom, but knowing for certain that the only way that one can find that forgiveness is because of God and God's love. Mm. And... Um, and so after the, the, you know, the, the speeches were done and the, the comments and the testimonials were done, um, it was so powerful to be in that kind of a sports stadium uh, with thousands of people, everyone lifting their voices mm. in amazing mm. grace. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So let's lift ours. Let's lift ours. <clears throat> and if you're listening at home, join us. Sing along. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. My fears relieve. 
How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Amazing grace, how sweet the sound That saved the wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found Next song we're going to do is one that you wrote. It's an original song called Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long ago did you write this song? I don't remember. You, you have any, yeah, like I think the, it's a 1980 or, 80, or 1979. Yeah. It's about that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have. Um, you know, obviously we grew up in a very musical home and uh, Crystal was just asking me, like, she's like, oh, do you play any musical instruments? So I was like, yeah, I, I feel like I play a little bit of a lot of different things. <laughs> I play a little bit of ukulele, a little bit of guitar, a little bit of keyboard, a little bit of drums. Um, but that was all really inspired by you because for as long as I can remember, you've had a guitar in your hands. Um, <laughs> Did you ever go to school? Did you ever go to music school? Or? No, no, it was, it's weird because my older brother, when we lived in Florida, my dad was stationed at Eglin Air Force Base, he had this baritone uke, and I'd never picked up a guitar, an instrument, really. But uh, this is like, I don't know, when 10 or 12 years old or something. But he never played it. It just sat there. And so I just got it, and I started kind of fooling around wow. with it. And yeah, yeah. And then... Pretty soon, I, I picked up a guitar and met a, a guy in high school that... Uh, Were you the only one who did that? And then your brothers, nobody else joined in? Yeah, nobody wow. did. Yeah. I, I, I've never heard this story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the family, all the brothers that have really good voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, it was during the folk music era. And then in high school, I uh, met a friend who uh, was just an excellent guitarist. He had just perfect, uh, perfect pitch in his voice and he could just... You could hear something one time and he could just repeat, you know, hear it an album. Peter, Paul, and Mary was the big uh, folk music uh, popular group at that time. So uh, somehow we ran into each other and we started playing music together and we started a little group together. That was in high school. High school, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And didn't, I, you, I, didn't you say you used to get records and try to listen to them and then play along? He I mean, would, that, yeah. We, we'd get a Peter, Paul, and Mary record. He'd listen to it and he said, okay, Mike, here's Peter's part. You sing that, I'll sing Paul, and of course, uh, Kim, uh, she sang uh, Mary's part. Oh, wow. He could just listen to it, then he could say, here, and he, he would just sing it. Oh. Here's the chords, and I'd say, okay, I'll follow you. <laughs> <laughs> and then pre and practice, and then pretty soon we That's were singing so cool. at uh, different places around town there in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And in high school? In high school, That's yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah were, cool. were a lot of kids in high school listening to that band at that time, or was that a little bit like... It was older than your crowd. Your, no, your... no, no. There was it was popular all over, but yeah. not as much as because we used to have things I called. I had a hammer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had a hammer in the morning. <laughs> you, know, you guys <laughs> yeah. probably don't know that. I song actually yet. have heard that song. <laughs> yeah, but actually we had things called hoot nannies. Uh huh. And so a hoot nanny was where different folk uh, folk groups got together, instead of like a high school dance. The, the, the folk musicians would get together, everybody would come, and then you'd sing songs together. It wasn't a dance or anything. It would just sing, <laughs> yeah, if I had people... a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. And then, uh, yeah, many songs, yeah. 
That sounds fun. Yeah, well, it, was, it was. It was. Yeah, <laughs> it was really fun. It's just like you know, people getting around, just you know, like in your house. Yeah, and yeah. how you yeah. we do it occasionally here yeah. with all your friends and just yeah. sharing, and then one person leads, and the other person has a song. It was, yeah. I love the. 19th. Did you do that? Did you do that in Michigan too? Yeah. You had hoot nannies. Oh yeah, and it just that that whole era of music was yeah. just so good. It's my favorite still. Yeah. You know? Peter Paul and Mary, and then the Kingston Trio. They were popular, and then Bob Dylan, of course, came on, and mm-hmm. that was. Uh, and so. And, and Gar- uh, what's his name? Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. 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 So, which yeah. of those artists inspired your harmonica guitar playing? That would be Bob Dylan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One yeah. of a kind. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. I, I, I still don't know how you do both of those things at the same time. <laughs> play the guitar, play the harmonica, and sing. Yeah. And then I ended up hitchhiking, actually, from Florida all the way to San Francisco in the summer of 1966. How with my long guitar. did that take? It took a while. <laughs> I can't remember the... But I like did, days, weeks, months? Uh, it, no, maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because the guy that from Florida, the guy that picked me up in Shreveport, Louisiana, took me from Shreveport to Las Vegas because he, he wow. was a gambler. And then he took me from Las Vegas to San Francisco. No kidding. Yeah, same yeah, guy. So, same guy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an amazing, amazing journey. It was lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Learned a lot. Did you sing to him in the car? <laughs> yeah, right. Turn the radio off. Of course. On. <laughs> Earn your keep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is a super special song well. uh, that, that you wrote and that uh, we grew up just knowing. I, you know, it's, it's one of those songs that I... I've got the paper here because I need to look at the chords, yeah. but yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, the message is beautiful and um, and powerful. So. Yeah. The message that he gives so simple. So clear to love the Father with all our hearts, with everything inside. Jesus Christ, dear Son of Abba, Jesus Christ. trying to love the world I'm so empty inside Jesus Christ dear son of Abba Jesus Christ lover of the Lord Jesus Christ we offer our Chant their holy names. You'll experience happiness. You'll never be the same. You'll taste the nectar of their love. You'll taste it night and day. You'll be in the world, but not of the world. There is no other way. Son of Abba, Jesus Christ, lover of the Lord. Jesus Christ, we offer our obeisances. Jesus Christ, please teach us how to love. We 
offer you our love. Beautiful. Very yeah, good. that's fun. <laughs> Here's some applause from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Um, this next song we're going to do is also very special, um, but it reminds me of, uh, you know, at different times I've gone through and looked at uh, different names of God coming from different scriptures and what the meanings of those names are. And mm. uh, it's always such a, a beautiful reminder of the many qualities of God and the many different uh, names that are used to describe him and his qualities. Right, and his relationships with people. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and this next song, um, I think, captures just, just a little bit of that. And, you know, one of them, of course, Emmanuel, God is with us. I yes. mean, that's no matter how difficult times we're going through, Emmanuel, God, he's with us all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's one of my favorites. I think... Uh, I'm just thinking right now of of people who aren't able to be, you know, with their loved ones during Christmas or, you know, for whatever reason, um, but also how alone we feel sometimes even when we're around a huge crowd of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a perfect example of that important reminder that we're never alone. Yeah. 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 God is with us. He's just waiting. It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. Just love me. <laughs> and this was written by a dear friend of ours. Jivan. Jivan, yeah. 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 Who, uh, Who uh, passed away recently. Yahshua, Messiah. Yahshua, Emmanuel. Yahshua, Messiah. Hosanna, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, Son of Man, Son of God, have mercy on me, Jesus Christ, Mary's Son, grant me love of God, Yeshua, Messiah, Yeshua, Emmanuel, Yeshua, Messiah, Hosanna, Emmanuel. Alleluia, 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 Hosanna. Hosanna, Emmanuel. Hosanna, Emmanuel. Beautiful. Nice. Actually, we should do this repertoire when we have our family gathering, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You have... There, there was a point in your life when you wanted to become a priest. And I gotta say... I'm grateful to be here because <laughs> if you had stuck with that path, <laughs> mom and I wouldn't be in the room. <laughs> so how, how did you, so you're a kid, one of seven. Yes. Six boys and a girl. Yes. Grandfather was in the Air Force. Uh, he was at Eglin Air Force Base at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, dare I say you were a little bit more rambunctious child of the seven rambunctious maybe <laughs> rebellious maybe a better word still still tempering uh. yes <laughs> he was often called himself the black sheep of the family. right right so i've so heard. when i told my parents i wanted to be a priest at, they, how, at what age uh that was 14 and what 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 in the world given a lot of the stories we're not going to get into here of you know, your exploits <laughs> since you were three or four years old. <laughs> what was it that at 14 drew you to that decision? It was actually uh, two monks from the, the seminary in Missouri. 
a mother of Good Counsel Seminary, who were traveling throughout the South, and they, they were like missionaries because mm. heavy-duty Baptists and not too many Catholics in the South at the time. And so they were speaking at uh, schools and churches wherever, wherever they were invited. So these guys were very charismatic, and they spoke uh, to the student body. At your school? At our school. Okay. Mm. And uh, eighth Public grade. Public school? Not Private, no. St. Oh, Mary's a, Elementary oh, School. Oh, that was a Catholic yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so uh, it was eighth grade, and then they described this place, um, the seminary, and all the wonderful things that were going on there. And I was thinking, you know, this sounds like a, a good opportunity. And having um, kind of thought about my life up to that point of just being selfishly, selfishly concerned about my own self and all, never thinking mm -hmm. of God or others in a deep way. Yeah. Um, I said, okay, I wanna, I wanna check this out, yeah. So when I told my parents, they were, uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, you didn't have to convince the, them of like, why no, they should no, let their 14-year-old no, son no, leave no, home? No, no, no. <laughs> How much is the bus ticket? <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> yeah. well, pack your bag for you, son. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Were yeah. your brothers surprised? Oh, yeah. 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 When you're the black sheep of the family, yeah. all of a sudden he wants to be a priest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's really going on, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so you, you hopped on the bus. That's a bit of a bus ride from yeah. Florida to Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got there, and it was just a, an amazing experience for me. To, you know, I think there was around 200 of us, uh, high school and college mm. uh, seminarians. And... Um, just the, the intensity of seven days a week being uh, immersed in Gregorian chant, uh, chanting uh, God's names and uh, his glories and the studying of scripture and just the classes and just being in that, it was, it was just very yeah, life-changing for me. And then after uh, that one year, I came home for summer vacation and um, discovered uh, surfing and girls. <laughs> 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 and so I um, told my mom and dad after the summer, and because they were you know, planning on going back, and I said, Mom, Dad, I think my plans have changed. Mm. I'm going to pursue other interests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That experience obviously stuck with you. Yes. And, and one of the, when I first got there at the seminary, though, it was uh, one of the things that just sticks with me to this day is, is you know, 200, roughly 200 men singing Gregorian chant a cappella, mm. three-part harmony. And I, I, I just had never experienced anything like that before. You know, yeah. my parents were devout Catholics and starting in third grade, I started going to Catholic school and everything, but I'd never heard anything like this. And one of the, the favorite tunes that stuck in my mind and heart is this, uh, it's Kyrie eleison, which means Lord have mercy, Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. <clears throat> Kyrie eleison, Kyrie <laughs> chicken skin as yeah. we say in hawaii yeah. just uh, <laughs> but you know as you as you were describing it 200 you know boys and young men lifting their voices in three-part harmonies yeah you know the powerful thing in that is not so much 
that you have 200 people singing in harmony, but you have 200 people lifting their hearts and their voices yes. in prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's that's the the difference and the power between, you know, singing some random song in harmony yeah. versus <laughs> and no instruments, yeah. just people yeah. really praying yeah. together. And, and the singing. church was packed yeah. every Sunday. And the priest would tell us they would drive from all over Missouri. I can see. To come and yeah. attend. Yeah, it was uh, very, very powerful. That's beautiful. Yeah. I experienced something not, not at all similar, but in that same vein, when I was deployed to Iraq, we had two companies of soldiers, infantry soldiers, who were from American Samoa. Mm. And so as we were doing our train ups here in Hawaii and then in Texas, and then um, even while we were deployed, but mostly, you know, when you're doing training, there's a lot in the military, they call it hurry up and wait. It's like, it's like, okay, here you gotta, and then you show up where you gotta be at this specific time. They're like, okay, cool, now wait your turn. And you wait an hour, two hours, and everybody's just sitting around. <laughs> and the coolest thing was, um, and you guys know this obviously, but uh, all of these like huge warriors of men from these infantry companies, from the Army Reserves in American Samoa, they would just sit around and uh, one of them would stand up and start leading them in singing uh, uh, all these different prayers and hymns from the Bible. And same thing, a cappella, no instruments, yeah. perfect harmonies. Yeah. Everybody knew exactly when to come in and yeah. what part they were supposed to sing. Yeah. And uh, you know, they start clapping their hands. And <laughs> before you knew it, like everybody was, everybody was involved. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was, uh, even if, even if you know, people who didn't speak in Samoan, a lot of it was in Samoan, some of it mm. was in English. But oh my gosh, it was so beautiful and so motivating and uh, and just so inspiring, powerful. Yeah, that was yeah. one of my favorite things about living in Samoa yeah. is there singing at different events and at church and yeah the same thing yeah it's just yeah. very moving actually yeah. Yeah. and they would do it as they were marching along oh, i saw yeah. a few videos and yeah. everything it's just like <laughs> got the it whole makes, world <laughs> in his head yeah, right right <laughs> and it makes everything so much easier doesn't yeah. it when you're singing yeah. and yeah. Yeah. having a good time just that like joy that. i mean yeah. you know truly truly experiencing and feeling that joy that again yeah comes from God's love and feeling him yep. and feeling his presence. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And in a situation like that, his protection. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And never forgetting. Oh. Have you seen this before? No. <laughs> because since they were children, all the way to exactly. Wait for the next one. Just wonder if it's genetic. Everyone has a good voice. <laughs> I wish I could have been part of that. His children, but now his children. I 
I've watched this so many times. I already I can see what you're seeing. <laughs> Everybody else is just watching. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, somewhere deep inside, they're like, I want to be a part of yeah. that. Exactly. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're having so much fun. The sergeants are standing there, now, yeah. you know, <laughs> smiling and going, wow, this is special. <laughs> back doesn't it yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so nice thank you thank you yeah so to be continued yes on yeah. christmas eve yeah yeah sounds, sounds good. good bringing the boys yep. the kids yep yep should all be there yeah love you i have love to you ask too. you a question though i saw on your kitchen counter over there a box of toffee almond toffee i don't know where it came from just it wondering, gone, does, it, does it measure up? It should up? have gone straight in the trash. I don't even know why it's there. <laughs> does it measure up? That's my question. <laughs> I would never touch it, just so you know. <laughs> okay, just... I would... A few I would pieces want are missing, so I need to there. ask someone. <laughs> we wanted to make sure you weren't... Uh, no, you know, <laughs> I would never dishonor mom's toffee <laughs> with anyone else's. <laughs> I honestly don't know where it came from. Okay. Some nice gift, though. And I don't you. know who ate it, either. <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for you. having us over. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. We know your time is precious. <laughs> <laughs> As is true for every one of us. Yeah. yeah. Make the most of the time we have. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you, Merry dear. Christmas. Love you, dear. <laughs> <laughs>